Y'all get ready? Yes, you get Y'all ready. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey you guys, it's your girl T and I hope you guys are doing good today. So I know it's been a few days since you guys have gotten a chance to see my lovely face, honey, okay? But I'm back on camera. As you guys all know, my cousin got married this weekend, so that was keeping me super busy. Weddings are super stressful and super exhausting, so I've just been literally sleeping the past few days and trying to get my energy back. But as you guys all know, this past Sunday, I took my youngest son to go see Avengers Infinity Wars, and when I tell you my ass left that movie theater shooketh, okay, not shook, but shooketh, okay? Shooketh. What the fuck happened? That movie had me literally reevaluating my entire life my entire existence, and my damn future, okay? So I know a lot of you guys wanted me to do a review. I asked y'all, and y'all was like, T, you gotta review it. You gotta talk about it. So here I am, you guys, blessing you guys with the review. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because y'all already know this review is about to be what? Piping hot. So anyhow, the Avengers Infinity Wars movie was so much more than I expected. When I tell you, I didn't really go in with any type of expectations because the last Avengers movie was just eh, okay to me. But this one, I have to give the Russo brothers their props, okay? Props to you guys, okay? Because even if you have not watched all of these Marvel Universe movies in sequence, I mean, they made it to where, you know what I'm saying, you could still follow along with the story. It was just so many different Marvel characters, over a dozen of them. Everyone from Star-Lord to Falcon, Mantis, the Scarlet Witch, Black Widow, Chala, Shuri, the Hawk. I mean, the whole situation was just nuts, okay? So to see all these characters was just insane. The opening numbers came out and they literally made $630 million worldwide opening weekend. This is one of the biggest Marvel openers ever. I knew this movie was about to be this shit because Saturday before the wedding, I had logged on to Twitter and I saw people literally going back and forth. Killmonger was trending and so was Thanos. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? And you literally had people saying that Thanos made Killmonger look like a whiny little bitch. So when I seen comments like that, I'm like, I have to go see this movie as soon as possible. Of course, it killed me to wait, but my cousin's wedding came first. And when I saw it, when I tell you, I was so impressed. Everything from the soundtrack, you know, just listening to the entrance music and the music throughout the movie, like it just moved you. You felt the music in your spirit, the animation, the CGI was crazy. When I tell you, Josh Borland, he literally brought Thanos to life, okay? When I tell you this was the first time I've ever really seen a CGI villain that looked that good, that was that believable, he did such a great job playing that character. Thanos' character was very multifaceted. It does put a smile on my face. As much as you wanted to hate him, there was still some of that compassion that you felt for him, especially during the whole situation with him and Gamora, okay? And right now, honey, when I tell you I am in my Gamora shit, I'm in my Gamora mode, I'm rocking some damn green lipstick to represent the fall of Gamora. I love her, she's one of my favorite characters from Guardians of the Galaxy. And to see her backstory and the little Gamora, she was just so adorable with her little hands. And to see how he became her so-called father by killing over half of her people. It was just really interesting to see just so many different dynamics play out and the transitions were just seamless in that movie. Literally you'll be watching one scene and you'll be emotionally invested and then it just transitioned into a whole nother scene but you were not upset. You weren't thinking well damn we were just on that scene now we're over here. It wasn't like weird jump cuts it just you know transitions really smoothly. <laughs> And then when the fight scenes came up, one minute you're in Wakanda, then the next minute you're in the galaxy, and you're going from one fight scene to another. The transitions were just so seamless that you weren't upset when you stopped watching one fight and picked up at another fight. So I love that about the movie. Now to all y'all who are calling Chala a damn coon and saying he needs to let the world know about Wakanda, he needs to help all black people around the world. Now do y'all same people who are calling him a coon, do y'all understand why Chala wanted to keep Wakanda a secret? Look where the damn final fight happened. It happened in Wakanda. And honey, when I tell you it was so good to go back to Wakanda, I can't believe it's 
it's been two months since we left Wakanda, okay? And to see it in all its glory and to see M'Baku, you know what I'm saying? To see him back and to see Okoye, you know, it was just really nice. It was almost like a black family reunion, okay? But a lot of folks were upset, like, you know, why they had to do the fight in Wakanda? Now you see the white man going to Wakanda, destroying Wakanda. And that's part of the reason why I said in the, my original review that as a king, it's hard because he has to worry about his people first and foremost. He's ruling them and he knows if he opens Wakanda to the outside world, then anybody could come to Wakanda and that's exactly what happened. But you also need to realize that they had to fight in Wakanda because Wakanda is one of the most powerful places in the planet. They have the most technology. That's the only place where they could even potentially beat Thanos. So it had to take place in Wakanda. For all you damn people who don't understand the Marvel comic universe, everything had to take place in Wakanda. That's one of the most powerful places on the planet. Did you guys not pay attention to the damn Black Panther movie? Okay, so anyhow. I mean, it was just so many good things, okay? I'm just trying to think about different stuff. Let me get back to Gamora. The fact that she knew about the Soul Stone really surprised me. I wasn't expecting that. And the fact that she was willing to, you know, save her sister's life, it just showed you so much. You know what I'm saying? How much empathy these characters had for each other. And when she saved her sister's life and she went to the Soul Stone place with Thanos, and, you know, when he had to make that gut-wrenching decision to throw his own daughter that he clearly loved, he really had love for Gamora. While we didn't think that it was possible for somebody like Thanos to love anybody, Gamora also realized it at the very end, like, wow, this man really loved me. And when he flung her overboard, honey, when I tell you, it was just like, <gasps> I had to clutch my pearls. I was just so shocked and it was just so sad. But when he got that soul stone, I'm like, damn, you know what I'm saying? This man done got another stone. But I think the part in the movie that also shocked a lot of us was the whole situation with Doctor Strange and Iron Man. Because during the whole movie, they're beefing. They're going back and forth. They're bickering. And for Doctor Strange to basically, you know what I'm saying, risk all of humanity to save Iron Man, that was so deep. That whole connection was so deep. Even Iron Man was shocked. And, you know, we're all watching this like, no, you can't kill Iron Man. You know what I'm saying? This is Iron Man. And for Doctor Strange to literally have his back in the final moments and give him the stone, when I tell you that was just heart-wrenching that was a heart-wrenching decision but I definitely loved how that part played out another part of the movie that I really loved was a whole Peter Dinklage situation he's a little person we haven't seen him since X-Men Days of Future is Past and I love that movie he did such a good job in that movie so to see him come back in Infinity Wars I definitely love that and the fact that they made the little person the giant and the regular average size person little was just amazing I love that concept I love how they flipped that around and he literally helped to save Thor and you know get that medal and you know the whole time we're watching Groot you know Groot is literally just playing video games the whole time you know he's not really you know being of any use to the Guardians he's just literally there and then to watch him actually step up you know, sacrifice his damn tree branch arm to help finish making that axe. I love that scene. And I just thought that was so deep. And now it made sense why Groot was there. Because the whole time it's like, Groot, you just going to keep playing the video game, bro? You just going to keep ignoring all this fabulousness going on around you? You know, but then when he finally stepped up, I thought that was dope. And then I also found it funny when Thor started speaking to Groot in his language. And I definitely love the whole dynamic between Rocket Raccoon and Thor. I thought that was really dope and they really had each other's back. You know, it was just so much in this movie to just take in. It's like if you blink, you miss something, you know. And I think the part that I really love was just the female dynamic, okay. So to see Black Widow, Okoye, and the Scarlet Witch all come together as this kick-ass female team against Pro Maxima Midnight, I thought that shit was dope as hell. The fighting scenes were just so engaging, you know what I'm saying? It just kept you drawn in. And I I love to see females coming together and I just thought it was really cool now a lot of people were really mad at the Scarlet Witch and I'm gonna need y'all to back up off of her okay you know y'all are mad and y'all are saying that she failed she failed the mission she didn't fail the mission if you guys really paid attention to the movie she did what she had to do she was in love with Vision she literally killed her own boyfriend to save the rest of the planet and you guys watched Vision die you guys watched her break down and she was trying to kill Vision but what everybody didn't realize, because they didn't know how far Thanos had gotten, they didn't realize that Thanos had gotten the Time Stone, okay? So while she did destroy the Mind Stone, 
They didn't know how far he had gotten in his mission. So yes, she did accomplish her mission. Yes, she did kill Vision. She did destroy the Mind Stone, but all Thanos had to do was go ahead and reset time, and that's what he did. So y'all stop blaming her and stop saying that she let down the damn universe. The Scarlet Witch did her damn job. She killed her damn boyfriend for the love of the universe, only to watch him die again because Thanos resurrected him by going back in time a few moments beforehand and ripping the damn Mind Stone out his damn forehead, okay? So she did the damn thing. Y'all stop blaming that woman. She tried, okay? Thanos was just too damn powerful. But I think what got me the most, I really love the Spider-Man character. Yes, I know a lot of us, you know, young people are still obsessed with the whole Tobey Maguire being one of the most favorite Spider-Mans. But come on, this isn't the year 2001, 2002, okay? While many of us love the first original Spider-Man movie with Tobey Maguire, he did a really good job. He was awkward. He definitely was not the best, okay? Tom Holland he killed the role of Spider-Man. When I tell you, when I looked at him, he looked believable. He looked like a 17-year-old teenager. You know, even when he was like trying to introduce himself and he's like, hi, I'm Peter Parker. And Doctor Strange was like, I'm Doctor Strange. And he's like, oh, we're using our, you know, monikers. We're using our fake names. And he's like, oh, well, I'm Spider-Man. Like, you know, that was like that childhood innocence and the fact that he was following and he was a stowaway and he was running behind Iron Man and trying to learn the tricks of the trade of Iron Man. And, you know, he really looked up to Iron Man I think that Tom Holland not only really exemplified Spider-Man, he also brought a lot of comedic relief. But, you know, when I tell you that ending scene that made everybody break down, when he goes, Mr. Stark, I don't feel so good. What's happening? And he grabs him and he hugs him and he just turns into ash. When I tell you I was in tears, okay? Waterworks. I didn't think I was going to go to this movie and be so emotionally drained when I left. I cried tears. First of all, when Chala Dam died, he was like, Okoye, what are you doing? You can't die here like this. And then he died? Honey, I started crying tears. But then when they killed Spider-Man, the waterworks. And then when people just started disappearing, I was emotionally drained because... You know, we've been watching these series before Disney ever took it over, okay? We've been watching these series since my, my son is now 17, okay? I remember taking him to his first Spider-Man movie when he was like two years old. You know, so we've been watching all of these movies over the past few years. When you have boys, you're like, you're literally, your life revolves around the whole Marvel comic universe, okay? So to watch all these favorite characters that we've been watching since they were children literally fade away and die, I was emotionally drained. I really was, like I cried. My youngest son was looking at me like, are you really crying right now? Yes, I am crying, don't you judge me. Sit there and eat your damn popcorn, okay? I mean, it was just so emotionally draining, you guys. I just, I didn't expect that. Now I wanna really talk about Thanos, okay? Now I wanna get deep into this and, and the stuff that I took away from this movie. And I know a lot of y'all think I'm just some, you know, ditzy, you know, bird and green lipstick, and that's fine. Y'all think what the fuck y'all wanna think about me, I don't give a damn. But I do wanna say this, um, it was a lot of hidden messages in this movie. Now there was some hidden messages in Black Panther, you know what I'm saying? Killmonger, I love the character Killmonger. But when I say this villain, he left a really strange taste in my mouth, okay? Thanos and the man who played him, Josh Borland, it was really deep. If you guys really pay attention to the things he was saying, the tease that I was getting from this movie, there was a lot of conspiracy tease going on in my head, okay? First of all, I'm gonna keep it all the way 100 with you. I kept getting this eugenics vibe from this movie. The things he was saying, I kept getting this whole useless eaters vibe, this Margaret Singer's vibe, this Nazi vibe, this Adolf Hitler vibe. And this is not a race thing before y'all come like, oh, here she goes with the race card. No, it's not about a race thing. When I say Hitler and I say Margaret Singer, I'm saying this because there's a particular philosophy that some of you guys may not know, or maybe y'all didn't even think this deeply into the movie. There's a philosophy that the Nazis used to say back when Hitler was ruling Germany, and it was called life unworthy of life. Okay, if you guys don't know about that philosophy, I suggest you Google it and you go research it. Okay, because that's one thing I do, I research. So it's called Life Unworthy of Life. And that's what I kept getting. That was the vibe I was getting from him. And I, I get it. 
you know, we're overpopulated. The earth, we're, we're wasting minerals and, and, you know, there's wars and there's just all this stuff that's going on in our, in our universe, right? And so his whole thing is that there's too many people and he wants to depopulate the population. And we all know that a lot of people with the elite, they have the same mentality. You know, get rid of the useless eaters, get rid of the people who are sick, get rid of the people who are handicapped, the people who are not good enough, get rid of them. And also the poor, right? And their whole philosophy is to save all these rich people and get rid of the poor people and then earth will be a better place. His philosophy is, oh no, we're not just gonna get rid of the poor people, we're gonna get rid of half the population regardless of your income. He wants to get rid of the rich, the poor, the sick, the healthy. There was no rhyme or reason to the people that he got rid of, which was crazy, which was a crazy twist because I thought it was about him only wanting to save like the elite or you know, people with the best powers or the people who could help him in his fight. He didn't care about that. He wanted to get rid of half the population point blank period, regardless of your income, regardless of your social economic status. And I thought that was a marvelous twist. I thought that twist was crazy. That twist that they put in the movie of Thanos is what kind of almost humanized them to where it's like, okay, I want to hate him, but maybe he's not so bad because he's willing to get rid of the rich people. He's willing to get rid of some of the elitist people. He's willing to get rid of some of these rich people and some of these people that we look to, you know, on a social economic level. He's willing to get rid of half of them as well. So then it made it where you really couldn't hate him too much. Whereas if he was like, I want to get rid of all poor people, all sick people, all disabled people, you'd be like, you fucking monster. But when he said that he didn't care about rich, he didn't care about elitism, it kind of almost like, it, it made you not hate him as much. I don't know, maybe I'm alone, but it made you not hate him as much. But I don't know, I took a lot from this movie. It was very deep. It was very, very deep. But I was definitely getting eugenics teas from this movie. You know what I'm saying? I was definitely getting, you know, population control from this movie. And one thing I will say about a lot of our movies is that there's always some truth to them. I don't care if it's the Marvel comic universe or if it's just some type of comedy you can always find some type of truth. As we know, Hollywood is always putting gems into movies. And sometimes some of those gems come to pass. So it's going to be very, very interesting if any of this stuff that was being discussed and talked about and played out in this movie, if any of it comes to pass in the future. And I'm not saying next year. It might be 20 years from now. But I definitely got a lot of deep shit from that movie. And it, it emotionally drained me. Like when I saw it, I just needed to go lay my ass down and just think and think and think. It was such a deep movie and if you guys have not seen it definitely go check it out you guys will love it from start to finish kudos once again to the russo brothers they did the damn thing kudos to everyone who played in this movie and damn anthony mackie aka falcon was looking good as hell anyhow it was really good to see all these characters come together but when i tell you when half of them died it just yeah it, i i broke down it was a lot for me it was i was not expecting that i literally went into this movie with no expectations and then they also damn lied in the trailer they had the damn hawk all up in the movie and shit running with the other characters and damn bruce banner could barely even change it to the hawk half the damn time we didn't even see the hawk for one time in the dang on movie and that was at the beginning oh yeah and then he killed loki i mean it was just so much craziness i mean this movie honey i mean this review could be an hour long but i'm gonna stop it right here from the time the movie starts it's nothing but action okay from the time the movie starts it's action it's drama it's morbid you know what i'm saying it's all types of stuff going on you know thanos did not come to play his goons that were with him they were just as crazy and scary you guys will definitely love this movie if you guys have not seen it i suggest you guys go and check it out so anyways y'all let's go ahead and get the discussion popping go ahead and leave a comment let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation concerning avengers infinity wars have you seen it yet what was your favorite scene who was your favorite character? And am I the only one who broke down crying when Spider-Man and Chala and all the other characters started dying? Don't judge me. I know I wasn't alone. So anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right. Deuces. Nikki! <laughs> Hey you guys, it's your girl T. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share my videos. You can also visit lovelytea.com to purchase any merchandise. Also, don't forget to click the boxes down below to watch any of my previous videos. Talk to y'all later. Deuces.